to another episode of Baggers Chat. My name is Mitch Batson, and as always, we're joined by Ethan Daffy, and tonight we are previewing our round 22 clash. Three <laughs> more rounds left in the season. Obviously, it is Carlton v Hawthorne at the MCG Sunday, 11th of August, 1-10, red footy, Sunday afternoon. That's where dreams are made of, Daffy Boy. But of course, it is our retro round. Ra- well, it's on our retro round, but it's our... 160 year anniversary um, game where we will be wearing um, a bit of a um, a retro jersey this week. So that will uh, be a great occasion to celebrate um, our 160 years. We, we were just speaking about off air, Daffy Boy, um, about how the 150th feels like yeah. last year or two years ago. Um, but obviously now we're so- celebrating 160 years. So that is absolutely fine by. But first things first, Daffy Boy, how are you? No, I'm good. Um... Considering the last, you know, six weeks or so, it can get you down. But I'm I'm trying to keep a positive outlook. I think it keeps me from really getting too angry with the situation. The situation's not ideal at the moment. Um, but I think, you know, you know, the way I looked at the whole ending in the game on the weekend and the way the players kind of kept united. And the, the I know it's a lot of talk and a lot of not on field stuff and and I know people go, you got to walk the walk as well. But sometimes you do got to do the talk as well. you got to do the talk and keep that positive messaging. You know, the Cripps' interview post-game, I was happy with. Bossy's press conference was interesting. Um, not too pleased with that. But uh, sometimes it's a hard <laughs> position to be in when you're being questioned um, like that. Because um, I'm sure in the four walls, I'm sure he's talking about certain things and what, how we want to improve. They're not going to be accepting results like that. But like you said, with the 160 years, I think... You know, we, we're young, you know, supporters. And, you know, I watched that doco last week um, about the 1970 grand final and it kind of, it just gives you, there's something about it. It's like, you know, this club's been around for so much longer than we have, like before we even were, you know, like obviously 160 years. But, you know, you just don't think that, like the passion, you just never think of the passion back then, you know what I mean? And then you see those docos and people talking about it and you go, like, the passion was almost sometimes larger um you know back in the day you know so uh yeah we good i'm sure i think they've got 50 past players um on the ground um in the guard of honor for the players who run out so hopefully that galvanizes them and, and the ending like i touched on last week i think you know the players getting around gov and you know Cripper doing that post and stuff like that shows you that you know their mentality isn't they're giving up they're not giving up or they're not settling for a, just a top eight spot they know there's plenty of chapters to go in this season so we can turn it around and I can back these boys to turn it around, hopefully. Mm. It's always funny because whenever they post or like they just there's just a bit of emotion <laughs> where yeah. we kind of speak about that. Ah, oh, like you love it when they kind of get together and unite and it kind of brings our supporters who were so disappointed after the Pies game yeah. kind of back in a little bit. I mean, we'll, we'll always be <laughs> around them, of course, but it's like yep. when that post came out, I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm back on it. Oh, but yeah, yeah, really, I'm back here. <laughs> And this little buddy, so I'll find a way to lose the Hawthorne with a goal after the side with buddy Guy Newcomb sliding it from 50. But uh, Tappy Boy, let's, let's move <laughs> straight in to the injury list. And obviously, I'm going to go throw straight to you. So um, obviously, yep. um, you will take us through the injury list. But there's a few names. There's one crucial name yeah. that is obviously a test this week, and that's a mm-hmm. positive. But there's a guy that was obviously a test coming into this week that played in the game last week, which is obviously very interesting. But... Your yep. injury list, uh, the injury list, sorry. Take us through yep. what you've got. Yeah, so there was a few updates. Obviously, six uh, main updates from this week. Obviously, you got the recurring injury, uh, the apparent injuries with, you know, O'Keefe and et cetera, et cetera, um, that we know the kind of timeline around those guys. But the main one, um, obviously, he's confirmed to miss the rest of the season um, is Matt Cottrell. He just can't catch a break, I think. Um, it's one of those years, you know, when players just have those years where they're just in and out with different injuries, Obviously, he had that foot earlier in the year, which I think it's really impacted him. Yeah, it has, and I think a foot. This is something about it. I feel like a lot of players struggle to come back um, in season from from those injuries. I think you know if you have the off season and you get to work on that, you're okay. But I think in season they just seem to never really get back to where where they left off. So he'll have the surgery. He'll get back to normal for next year, and hopefully he's raring to go. Um, it's, it's disappointing because you just want that depth heading into hopefully the upcoming final series, which isn't locked in yet, which is a little bit frustrating. But 
Um, our other injury um, is, is Adam Chera um, with that hamstring. Um, it's just frustrating for him. And I think we have to just accept he's going to be one of those players, I think. Um, you know, there's heaps of guys like that in the AFL. You look at, you know, Adam Trelaw had his struggles with his hammies over the years. And that's just one name I, that's popped in my head. But there's heaps heaps and heaps of players who have recurring injuries over the span of a, of their AFL career. So that let's say it's in the next fortnight, but I really, I really don't think he's going to be anywhere near it until maybe the finals. And if that, Pato, you know, I, I don't want to be, you know, bringing guys in and out and tinkering when we need to be winning important games. So that's just going to be interesting. That's for another time to see if he's selected, but he'll be out for two to three weeks. I'll go through the next few ones. Obviously, Charlie's had that. He's had an ankle issue, I think, in my opinion, the last month. I think he's been, you know, there's no excuse. I thought he struggled on the weekend. But, yeah, he's had that rolled ankle. He'll be right for Sunday. Yeah, I think he has to play, doesn't he, um, with that ankle. Especially if Zach, well, the guy I'm about to touch on, Zach Williams comes into the side. I think it helps Charlie and, and Harry as well, especially if they're a little bit down on form. But um, the next one's Caleb Marchbank. He had a, uh, a concussion that was kind of a seven to 12 day. So I think they've probably taken a precaution with him. Um, he's one of those players. I think he's probably missed a precaution. Uh, at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I, I think he, you know, if he's a one to two weeker, I think he's almost a three weeker. So he's that type of player. Uh, he'll be unavailable. I, I think he's, geez, he's on the fringe at the moment, isn't he? Uh, he just can't get his body right and uh, not nothing to do with his ability, but fuck. We need players available. We need to win premierships. <laughs> so, um, and the next one is Arazio. He's just having that calf. He just can't get it right, uh, which has been an issue in his career. That's probably held him back from playing a little bit more footy in his in his time, especially when he was at Port Adelaide. So that's annoying because you, you touched on before the episode, you said you'd probably go uh, him in for, for Cotters like we did earlier in the year and that kind of good vein of uh, stretch of form. So that's disappointing, but hopefully he's back in the next couple. And the big one who I think we all kind of forget how good he played and the point of difference, you know, the the, the line we like using, but he is the point of difference up there. Um, I think he's that type of play. If we had him last week, five minutes to go against Collingwood, pick up the ball on the, on the chaos ball on deck, whip it on your foot over your shoulder and kick the winning goal. He's that type of player. Mm. And he's that point of difference, and um, he looks like he's he's going to play this week, hopefully. Um, so overall, Pato, what's your overall thoughts? Are you thinking positively looking at this, or um, are you having a negative kind of mindset looking at it? Yeah, I, there's a few players obviously that we've touched on that is very very unlucky. I mean, obviously with Callum Marchbank, I think <laughs> you've got to. I don't think if he plays another senior game for the rest of the year, I don't think he'll be in navy blue um, next year. And I think that was probably a conversation a few a few weeks ago. Let's be real. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, oh, I, the the conversation that you said about Adam Chera about mm. um, if he is available to come back into the side come finals time, it might be a story with Jack Silvani and Matt Kennedy kind yeah. of last year. I mean, obviously yeah. Matt Kennedy played in the semi final, but. Mm he probably came in because of Jack Martin missing the elimination final. So there probably yeah. wasn't really a spot for McKinney, but when, like, I mean, Jack Silvani was probably more of a, um, a real, like a really sick case here. Cause Adam Chera, if he's kind of right to go by finals time, Michael Voss might be like, well, sorry, I don't think you come in. Um, yeah. And it's just because I don't think, I don't think we can trust him in a final. Like, I don't yeah. think we can trust halfway through the second quarter, he comes off with a with a hamstring injury. I don't think we should go with that. And it's the same conversation with Sam Doherty. Let's be real. Like, Sam Doherty yeah. might be right to go come final time or he might be ready to go for a semi-final if we do make it. But, but can we trust him? He hasn't played all year. He hasn't played in 12 months. Do we, I mean, not 12 months, but yeah, like, he, like he obviously hasn't, hasn't played since opening yeah. round. So... I don't know if we might go down that path. I'm not too sure, but I just think we need to be a little bit more strategic this year. Um, and I think we were doing it last year a lot. Um, heading into finals last year, we needed to make sure that our team was set and right. And there wasn't a lot of changes coming into the elimination final, which was good to say. Right. So, yeah. And the one the one concerning one there is Charlie Kerno. Um, yeah. And, like he hasn't been on the injury list for ever since his ankle injury has kind of, um, now that he's actually on the list, 
yeah. that's the worry just a little bit. I mean, I know that I'm probably over um over overreacting a little bit and overthinking it, but um yeah, that's a little bit of a worry seeing that. And I think, as you said, I think he has to play this week, even if he is probably seventy five percent. Um, and you probably hate to say that because you want every single player out there to be a hundred percent. But coming to this time of the season, no one's hundred um, percent. Yep. So, yeah, mate, I'm I'm nervous about it, but. Matt, Matt Cottrell, God, that, that's stiff on him. But yeah. it's probably a conversation where if he wasn't injured, do you play him? Yeah. I don't know. But, um, oh. yeah, mate, it's uh, it's obviously very unfortunate on some players, but, yeah, nothing else to say. Yeah, it's it's it's. I think we just got to keep uh, – for me, I'm just trying to keep a positive mindset the next three weeks. I think that's all we can do, to be honest. Um, we've almost – you know, we've, we know what rock bottom is, and this is not. Rock bottom. It's it's mm. you know like that. Um, Tim Gossage on SCNWA he always has an interesting opinion, and you know I sent that video to you, and and I, I saw someone posted on Twitter about this video. If we really want to galvanize a group, show them a video like that. Mm. Go, this is not you know we don't want to get to this stage where p- people are saying this stuff. So um, I think it was a massive overreaction. Uh, I'm not sure if he was watching the whole season, but. Uh, yeah, we're two, we're two games off the off the top, and we're eighth. It's just the way the season's going, isn't it? Like if you look at two years ago, three years ago, if we were in this spot, we'd be top four and probably locked in finals. It's it's yeah. it's good for the league, not good for us at the moment because we picked the wrong year to be bloody good. But um, yeah, I just I don't really get those comments. You know, that saying the list is shit, and uh, it's not. Like of course we're always going to have. I feel like we've got obviously a key defender probably not an issue, but a, probably a gap that we can fix. Um, but I think every team has their needs, don't they? Heading into a trade period, whether you finish on top or you finish on bottom, you, you're never going to have the right list and you're always going to keep looking for it because I think people just think, oh, we'll have a good trade period and we're settled for five years. You're just not. You're just not. you got to gotta be good in your draft and you got to be good in your trade period and then land the right guys. So, um, yeah, that'll be an interesting watch come off season in terms of um, who we look at. Yeah, I think I think that that whole thing. Yeah. Like even when you said it to me, I mean, I'm not going to say what I said to you because we'll keep <laughs> going off air. But I just think some of the things that he was saying, uh, I just think he was obviously trying to get clicks, and that is that shit nowadays. Like yeah. every kind of media outlet, I'm not saying every media outlet. I'm I'm saying yeah. like a few um, posts is kind of it's yeah. it's basing on negative, toxic yep. sort of comments, and you know that you'll get clicks because everyone's commenting on it. I just feel like that's the same thing. Like yep. we've, I mean, I feel like we will say stuff like that, but we won't go that far into it. No, because no. we know that this team is yeah. the best. Like when we are playing well, and that's not us being biased. When no. we're playing well, I reckon our best is the best in the competition, and I will stand by that. And I've always said it. Yeah, and I just don't think I, like even last year we were we were saying it last year, and I think I think we've had another year this year. Yeah. playing well and we've hmm. got dismantled teams and I think last year we were kind of seeing that towards the back end of the year and I think come Brisbane we kind of just ran out of gas mm. but yeah. I just think this year we, um, I, like, I think every team has their and this team is still yeah. a little bit inexperienced come to the big stage so I think a few yeah. losses mm. might help this group and of course you don't want to fucking lose to Collingwood no, of, of course, course. Yeah. but I don't know if maybe this will reignite the group. I, I, mm. I hate that. I hate that we have to lose to Collingwood to reignite the group. <laughs> I, I, I would rather us beat Collingwood and then it reignites them. But mm. um, yeah, just when he says stuff like that, I'm just like, yeah, I, I, I'm not a fan of it because I know and you know and everyone pretty much watching it who knows. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to say knows footy because he's obviously got a very prestigious job. Yeah, so he must yeah, have yeah. some sort of a bit. I just think that he only said that because. of, because he knew that Colton supporters would come on and give, and give him negative, yep. um, mm. I guess like energy. It's terrible. Yeah, it's, it's it terrible. seems to be the it seems to be the case. I think you're exactly right. Like it's not even just with us. Like if Essendon drop a game, all of a sudden, all oh, their seasons in disarray, and then they win on the weekend. But like, and then it's quiet. It's like it's you got to be got to have energy both ways, um, mm. especially when we're winning. But yeah, like I've read comments and they go, oh, you know. Carl, they haven't done anything. And I agree. We have not achieved one single You said it. Thing. You we said it in the review. We haven't. We haven't. But we know they're capable because we've had a good year. I said it in the review. We've had a good year. We've just let it slip the last month. 
Like, I think, you know, apart from, you know, I think even the start of the year, we started four, four and oh, five, like around five and oh, like in that section, we had a little bit of drop off, a little bit of form, but then we won six straight or whatever. Mm. And it's a good year. Like, we've had a good year. I think I was listening to, to the podcast, but I think we've almost let the pressure of being in the top seeded teams during the season get to us. Like, the, the pressure of, where the where the benchmark or we're up there with Sydney. We haven't been like that. Last year we weren't because we came from fifteenth. No mm. one expected us to go all the way. And then when we, when we were playing teams, they were under pressure going, oh, fuck, they're in form. They've got nothing to lose because they've come from nothing. But this year ex- expectations and then you get to about second and around round fifteen, you would be thinking as a player, like, you know, oh shit, you know, like we're almost not looking forward to the tar- to the goal, we're almost looking getting a little bit scared of what's behind us. And that's what happened to the Giants. I think that's what happened against the Dogs. And even against Collingwood on the weekend, it was almost like, oh. But rather than focusing on our overall goal, which we know we can get to in the, in the Premiership Cup, we're, we're almost looking going, oh, these teams that are coming. We're, don't even worry about them. Mm. Don't even worry about them. Like you said, above the shoulders, that's all it is right now. Mm. That's all it is right now. Because I know... The way they tried to play on the weekend was more positive with ball movement. I know we talked about, obviously, there was issues with ball movement, probably in that second and third term. But I thought in that first quarter, you turn that 1-8 into, you know, 5-3, 6-2, like you'd probably go and you'd have massive momentum heading into the, you know, the rest of the game and it didn't happen. But it's just, yeah, it's just, I think sometimes we look at it in, in a negative view sometimes, especially when it's Collingwood, when you lose to Collingwood and, your whole season isn't just Collingwood. So they beat us. Move so on. what? Move on. I think we've got to get to that point now. Mm. That was a very good, um, I guess, like analogy on what you said about worrying about what's behind us and not actually. Because mm. don't you reckon that's kind of how, how our game style has been the past two months? Yes. Not two months, yeah, that's, sorry. About that's what like I mean. Six, six weeks. Because mm. I feel like we're more worried about making sure our defense is structured. Yeah. And it's so yeah. funny that you said that because I'm like, yeah. I, I like I was like oh well like you're kind of saying that about the ladder of course but it's like you're probably mm. saying that about the actual game plan as well. It's, it's how not... you play. It's like you're almost scared to take a risk because you, yes. you you know the strengths of whoever. You know what I mean? And then and then like the, the Voss talked about in the press commentary is proud how he fought to line. I was proud how he fought to line, yeah. but it's not. But it's not that. It, it, like I was you know proud to some extent. But why don't we take these risks on in the third, second and third quarter? Why aren't we taking oh. them on in the first, second of the game? That's what I mean. Do not worry about it behind us. Uh, you know, yeah. the analogy, don't worry. Do not worry. And I think like, it's almost got to that stage where, we, like you said, it's that priority on defence. Like we were beating teams like Geelong, scoring 140. Mm. You know what I mean? And when we were still defend. It actually helps you defend, 100%. I think. 100%. Because you, if you got the ball more times in your forward half, you, it's easier to set up the ground <laughs> defensively. You know, it helps you, like, because when we've got the ball in our half you, and you're getting the ball around the defence, we've got the ball and they're more focusing on the ball movement. If that ball's down the line or just forward, then they can set up on the ball like Weederings and McGovern's and, you know, and I feel like we get caught out the back when we don't attack enough. Rather, because I think people think we attack too much and that catches out the back. But I think it's when you don't, ca- you're not enough because our entries go to 40 meters. We talk about this. Our entries go to 40 meters or 50. And what happens, Pato? They come out straight back out because you aren't attacking and you're not taking mm. risks going forward. And what happens? You get hurt on the way back. So it's easy to score a goal. It's not as far away from goal. So, yeah, that's my little rant. Mm. When you explain it like that, football is easy. <laughs> well, it's a simple game, isn't it? It really is. Yeah. It's it's just, I feel like you said it right. And it was the, when it's locked in our forwards, it's down to our forward yeah. and our mids to defend. And I think when they get the opportunity, they're quite good. Because as you said, we're scoring 134 or whatever, um, um, how many points we scored against um, the Cats. Yeah. It's, I just think like when the ball is down there, there's more positivity because yeah. we're you know that he yeah. is a quarterback, so he's going to be the guy sorting everything out. Yep. And I love that because mm. if I feel like if Weedering's a guy intercepting, I'm like, ah, oh. but it's great because you have a guy like Weedering, one of the greatest defenders in the game. Oh. But 
I would rather him be the quarterback knowing that he every single Carlton player is in front of him. Yep. Making sure yep. that he is the fullback. He mm. doesn't need to be like, it shouldn't be, I don't know, like Sard or Nick Newman behind Weedering. It should be right. in front of everyone. Mm. Mm. So yeah. I just think he needs to be the, the quarterback and he needs to direct the players of, because he can do that when the footy is in the front half. Yes. The, the front 50 even, like they're like inside yeah. our forward 50. Mm. That's... Uh, I just can't comprehend it. And there obviously is something that they like, – obviously they're trying to do that. Yeah, of That's course. I would love to be a fly on the wall yeah. in, the, in the team meetings and just understand mm. what – going into <laughs> the game, what their mindset is. Because I, I just feel like it's so much – they are so worried about what they, <laughs> what the opposition are going to do. Yep. It's like, as mm. I've said, when we are playing our best, no one can stop us. No. And I'm not saying, and, and this might be clipped, I don't know, but <laughs> I, I, it's, it's I, true. It is true, isn't it? Like, I don't yeah. know if I'm being biased. Like, am I being a little bit biased? No. Well, of course, being a talent supporter, we have to be biased but at some stage. But no, you're not. And you can say that about a lot of teams, I think. When they're at their best, it's hard to stop because we talk about momentum um, in the game and mm. you know the Port Adelaide, the Port Adelaide game, we were all over them up until half time, and then they flicked a switch, and that's what happens. That's what happens. It's like sometimes it's just, and I think we are enabling ourselves to get that momentum to go, you know, five, six, seven goals straight because we're not attacking enough, like you said. Um, and it, and I think we're having enough, you know, repeat entries now. They're getting it out, and then they're getting a stoppage eighty from goal. And then they're beating us at a stoppage, and then you know it's just like a whole. It's a domino effect in the in your like your, from your ball movement to like your defend forward of the ball. It's just oh, that's why I'm positive. The, the easy like not easy fixes because AFL football is not easy, but I just want to like you said, I want to know the messaging. What is the messaging at the moment, mm. especially in that first quarter on the weekend, which was promising. Like the way we were getting the ball forward, we were, I think we might have been double on the inside fifties. And then we had the nine shots and everyone talks about the one eight, blah, blah, blah. But you're getting it in a minimum nine times there. So why aren't we enforcing that message going, it's a matter of time we're going to cut, start kicking straight and hitting the scoreboard. Like we were in those games when we were, you know, the Richmond game and we kept playing the way we were playing because we knew the damn wall was going to bust. Yes. And what did it do, Pat? You kick six, seven straight and the game is done. Yeah, done. So just keep playing that positive way. Don't hold back because of the scoreboard. You almost, it's more like they say, more system based. You know, people go more the process and the system base rather than the scoreboard, and people get really pissed off about that. But I actually get that. Don't even worry about the scoreboard. Mm. You know, you'll be playing well by the way we play, and then the scoreboard will figure out itself. Mm. You know, exactly right. Because um, also, what, what you said then, and, and, and what I kind of agree with is the, the, the inside 50s, we've been, we, we've been really good in that aspect to a stretch. I won't, yeah. I won't overreact and say we've been really good. We've been, we've been um, solid to a stretch. But what I will say is on the weekend, what I saw, and I want to see your opinion on this, it, the, the set shots weren't as easy as we make it. Uh, usually. Like, say, like, uh, Harry McCoy was having a shot from the – and I'm just like, yeah, there was something yeah. about that. So I just think like the zero goals eight. I mean, I know a few of them were rushed behind. I think like maybe three or four of them were. So I think it was half actual chances and then half were rushed. But yeah. I just think the 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 difference is we need to have better shots inside fifty. And I don't know if maybe that's why they do the chippity dippity all around to try. Yeah, and yeah. But I just I just don't think that works with us. No. Do you see the same thing? Oh, I agree. I th- I was thinking the exact same thing in that first quarter. I was like, we just need an easy one. Mm. We just need an easy one. And 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 you look at the opposite side of the of the game in the last five minutes, we couldn't find an easy way to get the last goal, Pato, which ends up losing us the game. We had five minutes. Like that's what that is so much time. It wasn't like we caught up and it was, you know, a minute to go. You know, sometimes you catch up late and it's like 30 seconds. It has to be all or nothing. And we didn't have to go all or nothing. It was five minutes. To kick one goal, they were rattled, were all over them. We had control of the ball in our forward half, and we just could not find a way. And the same as the start of the game, the bookends of the game are the most important parts of the game. I know we talk about this. Of course, the second and third are important as well. But to start and the, the way you start and the way you finish the game is sometimes how the game is just decided. And that's that's the, that's the reality, and especially in finals where games are close. It's about nailing it in those moments. And like you said... I'm not here to see hero goals. 
on the boundary, mm. or from an angle. Of course, there's sometimes times where you have to. Yeah. Right? Just get an easy 20-meter shot for Harry at the start of a game. He's got a good matchup, even though I thought uh, Frampton bullied him a fair bit last week, which was a bit worrying in my eyes, which mm. was weird because I thought he was been playing well this year, Harry. I just thought, but you know what I mean? Just get an easy shot. And apart from the, the Motlop shot, the, the infamous, infamous Motlop shot from straight in front, we're just going to get more of those opportunities like we were against Richmond and that. They're just easy goals. Give me mm. It feels like we're, we're reviewing the episode again. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Sorry. It feels like we're reviewing the game again. But um, yeah, yeah uh, it, it just shows how much uh, we hate losing to the Collywood. <laughs> getting into our preview episode, we've kind of spent half the time still reflecting to that fucking loss <laughs> against the Pies. But uh, definitely, let's now move on to yep. our ins and outs. So obviously... Um, Reflecting on the injury list, um, there are obviously a few options that we can um, that we can do for this week uh, to bring in some players. Uh, but your ins and outs plus your sub, who have you got? Yeah, so I've got two ins and two outs um, for this game. Obviously, there's two forced outs out of this game. I, I didn't see anyone dropped. I've got a demotion to the sub, so I guess you count that as no, it's not dropped, but it's uh, out of the twenty two. Especially with those injuries, sometimes you just can't afford to change the team too much. Um, because I feel like that's hurting us as well. Like that the continuity of the team is just all out of whack sometimes. But I think we're gonna start getting back to that. I just I'm positive, Pato. I don't uh, do, am I delusional? I don't know. But it's not <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know if it's delusional because we're just we're two games off the fucking top of the ladder. Yeah. You win the next three, we make the top four. Simple as that. Because I think the results will sort themselves out. Because you got a lot of teams playing each other. Um, so there's an opportunity there. The door is there, Pat. We're walking towards the front door and we're just standing there waiting for the person to, to, to come to the door. But anyway, I don't know what that analogy was, but I'll continue. Ins and outs. I've got Chera and Cottrell out. Obviously, injuries forced out of the side. And my ins. I've got Zach Williams in the side. I said to you before we recorded, it could be a Carlton. I'd love to know this stat. I will actually check it, I reckon. How many games Zach Williams and Jack Martin have played together? They've never <laughs> played a game. They've never played a game together in the forward line, of course. So, geez, that that really intrigues me. Oh, yeah. That really intrigues me. And I think it almost puts a little bit of pressure on Motlop, to be honest. Because uh, I just don't know if he's performing at a level we want him to, but I, I want to give him another week. So, um, and the next in. He should have come in against Port Adelaide when we were running out of legs and we were coming off a five-day break. He's going to play his first ever full game in the Carlton jumper. Sunday Arvo, he's one of the best runners. Cottrell comes out of the side. We need someone to cover that running. I know Cottrell hasn't been to his best, but his running capacity is important. It is important in, you know, defensively as well, defensively speaking. Um, and it's Jackson Bins. And I'm pretty happy to say that because... I just feel like he's, it's just now that stage where he, I think he has to get his opportunity. And, you know, we talk about we need to get our team right, but maybe he's in an addition. Yep. Maybe Williams and him are the additions that we need um, in this side. So hopefully he gets a gig and, and my sub will be Alex Chin Cotter. Uh, he'll be my sub. I know you can probably tag a few guys in that team. Of course, you can tag anyone, but I just don't know, especially with me elevating Kennedy. I think you just have to play him in the middle and let them go to work. Him, Hewitt, Cripps, like Walsh, even though I'm still – Walsh in the middle is just that – I don't know. I still want him to have a little bit of an outside role at stages. Um, but, yeah, Jim is my sub and those are my changes, mate. Could you do Sam Walsh to play the Matt Cottrell role? Yeah, he could. Oh, he's struggling, isn't he? He is. It's just, it's just – it's a hard watch at the moment. It really is a hard watch. He's getting his touches, you know, and his standards are high. That's the standard we have of him, of course. But he's just like, and it's starting to creep in to the media as well. Like just the overall, not even just the media, but the AFL community are starting to see it. Because we often see players form earlier than others. I feel like it's like that two-week two patch and then we talk about it on an episode. And then two weeks later, they start talking about it in the mainstream media. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even when a player starts playing well, isn't it? It's like they don't talk about it yet. And then they let him have a month, like Chin Cotto tagging. He tagged, he beat um, Bobby Hill and he beat other players. And then he started to beat Butters and he started to have good roles and merit. And then they talked about it. 
So this is obviously vice versa in terms of Walsh's form. And they're talking about it. And they are talking about maybe we do need him on the outside of stage. I think we do too. I just think it unleashes him. And I think you're spot on. I think he can cover that. And, and Bins can play numerous roles as well. That's a good thing about him. He, he can play that probably half forward role. He can play that wing role. I think we just need that running capacity in the team. So, um, we, geez, it'll be interesting to see what they do. They, they tend not to p- pick bins, but it's going to be hard to now, I think. Mm. Cause yeah. Cause I just think that with Matt Kennedy coming in, yeah. Sam Walsh struggling in that midfield, let's be real. Let's be blatant and obvious right now. And then yep. I think it could be a bit of an, like an opportunity for Sam Walsh. Cause I think, as you said, he's getting mm. so much pressure because he's always, he's always feeling the pressure inside the midfield. And that just, yeah. it's a bit of, a, a bit of, um, like to be yeah. a little bit in that forward line, um, mm-hmm. even half forward, sure. like, we, like last year we played him at half forward. Remember, like that's how we've got the best finals play. He was starting at half forward yeah. in the finals, it almost gives him that kind of just that mental break at the start of a game. And I'll go, Oh, I'm straight into it. Four quarters are getting bashed and crashed. You know what I mean? Mm, yeah, I'm just thinking if that could be a mm. opportunity because. Because, yeah, because I just think he, he, he just seems like he's more defensive this year. He's yeah. not attacking. Have you seen the same thing? Yeah, it's just, he's not, he just doesn't seem to have a, like, I think in that five-week patch, he was really good in the middle when we were winning. But I just, since then, he just hasn't had that burst out of pack. He hasn't had that, you know, like you said, it's just, it's not a really a, attacking mindset. I feel like when he gets the ball, he's looking back. He's always looking back. Mm-hmm. He's not yeah. going to move the ball negatively. So it's, it's once you, like you said, I'd love to be a fly on the wall to see how they're looking at his game. Yeah. It's not like he's playing absolutely terribly, but he's just, we need him to have an impact, Pato. We can't afford to have any more of these weeks. We mm-hmm. creeps part the way he is. He needs someone running with him. And I knew Hewitt was fantastic last week, which had a big impact, but we just need numerous guys. We just aren't batting deep enough good enough in the middle at the moment. We always talk about how many mids we have, but simply we have had two guys, Max, probably having really good games and the others dropping off. Yeah. Yeah, no, exactly right. Yeah. Got it. I would, I would pay, I reckon, <laughs> I, reckon, I reckon I would pay a hell of a lot of money to see, uh, just, just sit in a meeting. Just yeah, like, yeah. don't even know that I'm, I'm like, I mean, try and be a fly <laughs> on the wall and just be like, you don't even know that I'm here. I just want to, I just want to listen and just yep. see where you're where you're at and where you're all at in terms of the coaching. Because like, even the yeah. um even the player meetings when they kind of look back at vision, yeah. Yeah. I want to just hear what they're yeah. saying about what he wants to do, what positions he wants to be in, yeah. and then he, like what the difference is come that week and yeah. see the difference. Because I just want to, I'm really intrigued by that because I mean, I mean, obviously I'm a coach, and then obviously like like you, you yeah, you yeah. Have a, yeah, have an interest in, in in coaching as well. I mean, like um. Like, Practical side, yeah, yeah, and then yeah. I think we kind of both have the same. Yeah, for sure. Um, I guess like we 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 like seeing what the coaches do mm. because mm. we're so into it that we love seeing <laughs> what they can actually do mm. in the hard times as well, but also in the good times. Yeah, yeah, see what you're doing and see what you can change. And I don't know, just I'm I'm really intrigued about that. But mm. um, yeah, my my ins and outs are quite interesting, and there's a reason why there's a certain selection that I'm doing and it's because of a change of role. So it's like Sam Walsh, but it's actually a different player. So my outs, obviously I'll start off with Adam Chera, Matt Cottrell, Alex Chin Cotter omitted, or even managed. He's had a few games in their seasons. Maybe go back into the VFL, but my opinion on Alex Chin Cotter right now, and I think it might be a little bit different to yours or other people that obviously support Carlton is right now, Alex Chincotta is only in the side to tag. Yeah, I agree. And I'm sorry. I think that has kind of almost had an impact on our mindset as well. Yeah, yep. Trying to have a negating role. Yep. 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 No, well, seriously, like, like, I feel like we're so focused so much on them. Mm. Focus more on us. And if we have to have a tag, you've yeah, got the George Hewitt there. I don't know how many times I have to say it. So <laughs> yep. I just feel like that... It, um. Yeah, it, like I just you don't know if maybe, as you said, play him as a sub, which I actually would like. Yeah. Um, but right now I'm going to manage him um, and maybe play him in the VFL. Then my ends, obviously, Matt Kennedy will be upgraded um, from the sub yep. into the best 22. Zach Williams, Jack Carroll. 
yep. in. Yep. And my sub will be Jackson Bins. Yep. So they are my ins. Now, my change this week, and the reason why I'm not playing Jackson Bins for that swap with Matt Cottrell, which I would love, the reason why yep. Elijah Hollands yep, it covering that Matt Cottrell role. And I've got a reason why. He is one of our best runners. Yeah, he is. And mm. I feel like I would rather him up the ground. Yeah, yeah. But also, well, just even, even that, on the wing, even on the wing. Well, that's exactly what I'm saying. Like, yeah. if you need, because I think Blake Hagers and and um and Ollie Hollands are the two wingers right now that are quite like they can run out of game quite easily. But yeah. if you need a bit of a change in the in the in the wingers, I think you can have Elijah Holland switching with Ollie because I think yeah. Blake yeah. Hagers is more capable. To run out of game on the wing than Ollie just because Ollie's young. But yeah. I think Elijah and Ollie and switching that would be fan, like fantastic. Mm. Um, and I'm sorry, but I think if Matt Cottrell was available to play this week, that was probably already my thinking anyway. Yeah, yeah. Because I just I, I've loved Elijah Hollins with the way that he plays, and I think it suits. He plays like Blake Akers almost in a way, but I think yeah, he's silky, Elijah though. is a little bit more like skillful almost. Oh. That, like that's the the check side goal and the yeah, um, he just got that something. He had those, he had those two weeks where we were talking about him. He was a bit off, and we were all off, weren't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, he's back. He like I thought he was great on the week. I thought him and Ollie, like you said, oh, I thought Ollie that was his best game of the year. Yeah, on, on, and I thought he's he he was winning one on ones. He was making the big plays. He was kicking the big goals, which should have ended up winning us the game in the run. Like like that mm-hmm. goal, kick, like fuck me. Like that's a man of the moment type um, stuff, and I think that you know Elijah's been kicking those goals as well this year, so it's good to see. And they have the running capacity, and you got numerous guys who can play that half forward, wing, mid, like like you look like we talked about Walsh as well. He can play on the outside if he has to. Mm. And then if Elijah in the middle if he's winning the ball more than Walsh, or you need someone different in there because I thought he was good in the middle as well last week. So mm. it's uh yeah, it's a it's a it's a good problem to have, I think. Yeah. It's just I've always loved Elijah as that as that runner, and I just think he can offer just a little bit more than. And we haven't exposed, we haven't explored yeah. that option yet. Yeah. Um, and I think he's always been that half forward. And also Zach Williams coming in, he can cover yeah. that forward role of Elijah. Yes. Jack Martin yeah. Williams. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> then, then, I mean, then you can play. You can set Elijah free. You can let him roam. To be yeah, honest, exactly right. Normal, he can almost still play that half forward role. But you let him go. He yeah. can run, help defensively. He can get out, you know, chains going from half back. He can yeah. kick goals down forward. He can do whatever he likes. I think he's that type of player. Yeah. You need to run the ball as much as you can because yeah. his impact with ball in hand is too good to have sticking in the forward line. Mm. I know about you, Daffy Boy, but I'm back on the Vossi train. <laughs> <laughs> I, just... I was never off it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, left, I left the station for about two seconds last week and, 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 and then the train was leaving. I'm like, get me back on. <laughs> but I'm just, just something about yeah. it. Just slight changes like this. Yeah, yeah. It, it matters so I much. Yeah, and, you need to have the, and I'm sorry, Elijah Hollins is a finals player. Mm-hmm. He plays, and could you imagine that in that forward line, Jack fucking Martin, Zachy <laughs> fucking Williams, and Elijah fucking Hollins yeah. barreling yeah. a top from... 84 metres out in front of the MCG. Oh, I just, yeah, I can't, I can't wait until we, <laughs> until, until we knock off the Swans, you know, the prelim fawns to make the great universe out of the Giants, mate. But uh, let's now move on to, <laughs> to our opposition watch. That yep. we, so to the people who don't know what this is, we go through backline, midfield and forward, um, um, the, the forward line for this yep. week against the oh my god! I've just got completely blank. <laughs> 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 it's a fucking I've just got completely blank. I was more uh, focused on uh, trying to get off the Teague train and getting on the Vossi train, mate. But uh, but obviously for the Hawks this week, um, they've been in very hot form. Uh, and this week we just go through the back line, midfield, and yep. forward, and we touch on one player who is a threat in that line. But that's boy. We're gonna start off with the back line opposition watch. Who have you got? Yeah, I love watching the Hawks play. Um, they're they're that team that's. I think they're almost there to be honest in terms of finals ability. I think they almost shot themselves in the foot to start the year. They would have made it much easier if they maybe half of those games instead of going zero and five. But 
Yeah. Um, and almost probably should have won last week in that Port Adelaide game. Like they're just so important every single game this year, and it can cost you ladder position. Um, and I think there's a new era beckoning at Hawthorne. I think, uh, gee, they're up there with the most luckiest fan base. They've had eras, era after era. You know, look at the eighties. You know, and then they had it, and then they always had the three peat, and they've been shit for the last ten years. Well, probably last. Five year, years, year probably year. six years. Oh, they haven't. Well, yeah. they haven't been great, have they? They haven't made finals since twenty eighteen. Yeah, so, but they've yeah. just been. They haven't been shit. Yeah, they haven't. Been, yeah, to their standards, I think they just haven't been that good. And now it's like, oh fuck, here we go again. It's like, oh no, oh dearie me. But <laughs> in defence, um, they've got a lot of guys down there that I, I just can't go past him. Seriously, just can't go past him. And he's a he's a hot head at stages. But James Sicily. Yeah. The way he's developed his game since becoming captain, because there was a lot of fingers pointed at him. I think even last year, like maybe his, you know, his the way he acted or the way he kind of led, and it wasn't good enough. But this year, he's been phenomenal. He's won him games when the, when he's pushed forward as well. So he has that ability too. That's why I really like him. He's just a genuine talent, uh, talented footballer. So yeah, James Sisley for me. We've just got to avoid his aerial dominance because I think that's what hurt us last week. We just kept allowing Jeremy Howes and even Frampton was taking grabs. And you know what I mean? Like, stop, get the ball to the deck against these players like this. You know, like, that's they can hurt you, guys like Sisley. Because if they get the ball in their hand, it's like weedering. And sometimes players like that, they can hurt you. They take the risky kicks and hit them um, and create forward opportunities and scoring opportunities. So, yeah, Sicily is for me the the target down there or the kind of focus down there. Yeah, no, absolutely love it, and I love it too much that it was exactly <laughs> my opposition watch. That was the first player that that they wrote down out of these three lines, and um, and I completely agree about the 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 captaincy, as you said, because I think the same thing happened with Toby Green. There's yes. been a, yeah. um, a bit of controversy going towards like, why would you give him the captaincy? <laughs> I don't think he can even handle himself on the field, but <laughs> the the clubs have improved since yeah. being captain. They've got that bit yep. of the edge. Mm. Um, and, and like, you can kind of like even speak about it. And um, I think players like that, yeah, I think it suits some clubs, but like clubs yeah. when it actually does work, it, it, it obviously works mm. tremendously. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I mean, Toby Green, like even when he was a part of that three, three captaincy, I don't know what year that was, but how yeah. bizarre that was. I think it was Canelio, Kelly, and Green, which is yeah, yeah. but they were the three, and then obviously Green. I think the year after, straight after, um, mm. was made the sole captain, which obviously yeah. shows, yeah, like the, that he was the main captain out of those three, and that and that that says something because we were probably thinking maybe Josh Talley probably would be the captain, even Cornelio again being that sole captain, but yeah, having Green being that main guy was great, and I think you can kind of speak about the same thing with Sicily. Um, but yeah, I completely agree. I think he's such a good player. Um, every single time we play against Hawthorne, he need he's that player that we need to look out for. Mm. Um, but yeah, I think that's a very good backline opposition watch, Daffy Boy. So your midfield opposition watch, there's a few in there, even if you can say like even like a Gidman who's rolled through there. Yeah. Who have you got? Yeah, they're just um they got a few guys running through there, but I think the difference maker this year, since he came back, they started winning and playing more consistent footy and it's and he's listed at half forward last week, but he plays a lot of mid. It's Will Day. Yeah. Will Day. And I remember when he first came into the league, he was just skinny. I was like, is this guy like any good? Like, you know, so you just don't know. Uh, you know, we don't look at into those teams as much as we look into Carlton and uh, clearly he was uh, they knew he was going to be a talent and you know he's obviously you know grown into his body and he's a bigger body and he's recovered from his kind of lingering injury issues he kind of had the last probably nine months I reckon back into last year and the start of this year so yeah he's been phenomenal and he's one of those guys who rolls anywhere if you need a half, someone a half back to just settle it down he can help you down there he can kick goals he can play in the middle he's that modern prototype kind of gun in a sense. So, yeah, I just think since he's come into the side, I think they've had a different look. I know there's a lot of players that contribute to that, but I think he's almost got improved that much from mm. the last time he played before he came back that it's having a crucial impact on this team. Mm. I think he definitely is that centrepiece in that midfield. Yeah. Um, and I think he creates a lot of that runoff. The, I mean, not really half back because he like, because he was a backman. Yeah, and yeah. I think it's great that he's moving to to that midfield um, role. And I think, as you said, I think 
I completely agree. I think he's been that player ever since yeah. he's come into the side. Hawthorne's had uh, that bit of a rejuvenation in their sense. Yeah. Um, but my midfield opposition watch, it was going to be John Newcomb, but I've actually changed it last minute. Dylan Moore. Yeah. You know, now that he's that half forward and he, he it's arguably like well, same thing with like maybe Jordan to go into a stretch of yeah, yeah, yeah. forward mid, but I just think he's been playing that mid role a little bit more this year. And I love the way that he plays his football. Mm. So I think I mean I'll, I would do anything to have him on a Carlton list, yeah. really. So um I think he, he's a super player and I think he is the the big watch in that midfield, but I mean, as I said, it, it like maybe you put a John Newcomb, Newcomb in there, Carl Amon, who's been playing on that wing, yeah. um, Massimo D'Ambrosio as well, who's had a super yeah. year. Mm. There's a, definitely a few players in there. But Daff, your forward line opposition watch, they're like their their forward line. They, it, it, I wouldn't say stacked, but there's obviously a lot of players mm. in there who contribute to kicking goals. Who have you got? I'm liking to look at their young players. Yeah. Like you're looking at, just to quickly look at a few of them, you got um, Kalshi Deer, you got Watson. They're both drafted this year. Yeah. Um, Ginevan, what a get that was for them. They just worked so well for he personally and for the team. Uh, I can't believe Colin would let him go, but um, I just think it was kind of meant to be there. I just I didn't think he was always going to stay at Collingwood. I just had that feeling always that he's one of those players. Like, just feel like he needed a change of scenery to have a change, an overall look and a perception of the public. So he is my he is my watch because uh, I think he's been a little bit quiet the last couple of weeks because he's kind of played that. I was reading a few Hawthorne forums and that just to get my head around the way they're looking at his role and he's kind of he's they're saying he's playing that kind of secondary wing role. So he's he's playing up forward, but he's actually pushing like high up the ground. So it's he's having less impact for the ball. And obviously the mainstream media go, oh, he's not having impact on the goal sheet, but maybe watch the fucking game because his role has actually changed. His role has changed the last two weeks. And he has that ability to. He had, what do you have, 30 touches versus Collingwood and a yeah. couple of goals? Probably his best game of his career. So he has an ability, to, a ball winner. He's just a natural footballer. That's that's what he is. That's the way I look at it. And um, if we let him off the leash, he can key a couple of goals. So I think we. the good thing about our defence, we seem to not let these little guys and the smaller forwards get the better of us. Because um, I think we match up well. You know, you got Saad, you got Newman, you got, you know, McGovern and Kemp can actually play on smalls if they have to. Um, and, you know, you obviously got Jordan Boyd and players like that. So I think we can, they've got kind of a small unit down there in a sense with D'Ambrosio playing forward as well, which is, like you said, gee, he is, he's a good footballer, yeah. a very, very good footballer. Their recruiting team has been great. So, yeah, Ginevan for me. Mm, yeah, no, I like it. Um, yeah, I think D'Ambrosio has been that winger, but he's kind of yeah. – he's actually like a Max Lottrell role. He really is. Yeah. Forward to wing if he really needs to. Um, and, yeah, like as you said, like he kicks a – like he, he's kicked goals. I think he kicked another two on the weekend. Yeah. Um, so so he's been super. But my forward line opposition watch, and it, it, it might come across as a bit of a niche one, but I don't think it's that niche. Connor McDonald. Yes. He is yeah. a player, and I think he's really evolved in that – Sam Mitchell sort of coaching and um, yeah. the way that he's gone about his football, he's got a bit of that, as you would love to say, the C-U-N-T. <laughs> he's got that about him. Yeah. Um, and he's running around with his buddy Rat Tail. Um, yeah, I mean, what's going just, on there? What's yeah. going on? In the, what, I don't know what's going on. There. Yeah, yeah. I probably, I, I, I mean, I probably would. I mean, he, he rocks it, so it's fine. I mean, if I was running around with that, that boy, <laughs> I don't know what, <laughs> I don't even know what, uh, what I, that would be about. But, um, <laughs> Yeah, I, I just think, I mean, he obviously ha- has it on because he obviously can play some pretty good football. Yeah. But, um, I think the way that he plays, um, he's obviously not the the big threat in the forward line. And I didn't really want to go for a main, like a main one, like yeah, yeah. a Chole or even like a Nick Watson, who's actually been playing quite well the past yeah. few weeks. Um, ever since Sam Mitchell kind of adjusted his goal king, I don't know if you heard about yeah. it. He's been kicking everything. Yeah. <laughs> But I think like that was also great having a, a like a, a the senior coach. Yes. Like I, I mean, there was obviously a bit of conversation about oh he might be having too many voices, but if you have the senior senior coach coaching you one on one, I kind of like the idea of that. So, um, but yeah, I think back to McDonald. I think it's um, he, he's a threat down there. But obviously, as you said, there's a few forward mm. um, threats down there for the Hawthorne Hawks, Daffy Boy, but. Let's now move on to 
how highly anticipated. <laughs> Last week, I think I took the blue bag as my 39 points to beat the Pies. And we were coming off four pretty shit performances. <laughs> we're now coming off another shit performance, but I just have a feeling oh, some... Okay. Sorry, well, I, think, I think last week, I know we lost, but I think there was more trying to get back to where we were. I don't think there was, you know, of course there was a lot of negatives, but I think I just saw enough to be okay. Yeah. We're trying to fix it. They're not ignoring the issues. Yeah. I just think like, especially if I carry off five, five pretty crappy losses, um, you probably would find a way that you and I will find a way to the Navy Blues. Um, this Sunday, uh, Arvo W Boy. But your match prediction, so obviously, bag of the game, point of difference, winner plus margin. That's the most reliable one, <laughs> I reckon. But <laughs> <laughs> your match <laughs> predictions, what have you got? Oh, it's uh, like, it's, like I've been saying, and I've been, you know, repeating it a lot. I've got a positive mindset. And I think the damn wall has to bust yeah. this weekend in the next three weeks. It just has to, I think. No, it doesn't have to, but I think we have to make it happen. We just have to make it happen. I just think, and I think Hawthorne are at that stage of the year where it's, have they reached their max? You know, they lost that game, the winnable game last week, and then you get to a team that hasn't won much and has the capability to put a team away. That's just the way I'm looking at it. It's a positive outlook. Uh, I'm not saying the Hawks can't get it done, but my bagger of the game, you just you just can't go past him. Yeah. Oh, he's going to win the Brownlow. He's going to win the Brownlow medal. He probably had the three last week again. With Dacos, wouldn't have got the three, and they're probably neck and neck at the moment. He would have got the three, Pato. The guy went off at halftime. He probably was up there with the best player on the ground. Cripps had 10. He had 30 and a goal. I think that's a Brownlow medalist type of performance. So he's going to be more bagger of the game, Pato. And the point of difference, the point of difference. Oh, okay. all I can say is Harle. <laughs> Harle. Fucking Luya. He's back. And it's Zach Williams into the side. Point of difference. He's going to kick, kick a couple of snags. It's like you said, sunny day. Red footy, I feel like we play better with a red footy. I don't know why. That could be a stat that I pulled out of my <laughs> ass. But point of difference, Zach Williams. And now, winner plus margin. <laughs> winner plus margin, Don McHughie. <laughs> uh, winner plus margin. I'm going to maintain the positive. I think it, it's got to be a time, doesn't it, Pato? I think. I think we just got to get it done. I know we said it last week with Collingwood, but I just feel like the storyline, everyone thinks, oh, they could miss the eight. They could miss the eight. But I think we just clean sweep the next three, get through this hard game this week. Hopefully it's not a hard game. Hopefully we put, wipe the floor with them and the game's over 10 minutes into the game. Mm. But winner plus margin. Winner plus, I don't think it's going to be tight. I don't think it's going to be tight, tight. I think it'll be, you know, that kind of, Close-ish, that two-goal kind of buffer all day, and I think we're going to win. I think we're going to win by twenty-eight points at the G. I think we need a little bit of a not percentage, but just that comfortable victory to head into West Coast, build on that again, and then hopefully knock off those that team that I hate naming in that last game. But I hate naming that venue and playing against <laughs> them at that venue. So I will keep that until that week. Uh, but yeah, winners by five goals for the mighty. Blue baggers. Yeah. No, love it. Absolutely love it. Now, my <laughs> winner plus margin is obviously a little bit um a little bit uh interesting that for you. But okay. so yeah. my bagger of the game, I'm going Elijah Hollands. Yep. And the reason for that is the change of role, I think he's yep. really gonna evolve in that role as well. So mm. I think um Elijah Holland's gonna be my bagger of the game. Point of difference, I'm going Georgie fucking New York, mate. <laughs> It just, it just, I loved so it. I, loved it. I must say, I, I loved it. A recount of like how many times when you go, George, how many times you said point of difference, Georgie fucking Hewitt. And that's not anything against you. I love it. I, love, I completely agree. I'd love to get a, I'd love to get a recount. George, it, just, it just creates a bit of spice about it because uh, Georgie Hewitt, mate, 
Uh, but yeah, I just love yeah. the way that he goes about it. Um, yeah. And I think, uh, I mean, we mentioned that he was the number one rated player on the ground yeah, last week. Yeah, so yeah. He might be in the round of votes as well. But um, I mean, obviously I gave him the three bag of the game votes last week. Yeah. So I think he's going to be that point of difference potentially this week. Winner plus margin. I told you after the review episode, I just don't think oh, I can tip Carlton this week. Yeah, you know what? <laughs> just been a change of plans, Daffy boy. We're getting it done, mate. We're getting it done. Let's just bring out the positivity in the world. But you don't want to know how much. Oh no, blues by a point. <laughs> blues by a point. And oh no, oh no. The no. reason for this is. We need to find our way to get a close win again. I think yeah, we just yeah. lost that. Yep. Like even Giants was twelve points, and that was probably winnable. Yeah, yep. Dogs mm-hmm. probably mm-hmm. a little bit further away. I mean, I know that it was fourteen points, but just it's still kind of the same. Yeah. Yep. I just think a win, one point win against the Hawks, just, just kind of. I, I reckon that will have a bigger impact on this group than a bigger win. Yeah, it, it, and and it's I, funny to say that. Oh, I, I agree. It is, it is funny to say. I agree, but also it will have a, a massive difference on my heart rate. Yeah, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. God, I'll be closer <laughs> to a heart attack if we are one point up <laughs> with a minute to go, rather than sitting laying down with a Canadian club in my hand, ten goals. Oh. <laughs> I don't even know why I've said it now because I'm usually the one who say I don't know the record. I can handle it. But, just get it done. Just get yeah, it done. I don't care how. I don't give a shit how. Just get it done. We just need a win yeah. against a team that's, you know, worthy. You know, yeah. North Melbourne we beat. It was like, yeah. Like, yeah. That was just, we could not get the job done, I think. So yeah. just get it done. Just get it done. Seriously. <laughs> just get it done. But, Daph, of course, that is our last segment of our preview episode. Um, And, go we're heading into round 23 next week, which is crazy. But obviously three more rounds left of the season. Season is still alive, but obviously we're not in a great position <laughs> right now. Not as great of a position that we probably would have wanted um, wanted to be in. But as you said, and I think as a few people have said, we can't find a way to lose this week. No. Yeah, just, that's what I mean. Uh, you can't, I don't think we can do it again. I, I think we just... We can. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're yeah. in the end, are we? So yeah. we can find a way. But I just think it's just, I feel like there's a lot of, even though there's been a little bit down, I think there's a lot of positivity from the group itself. That's the most important part. And I know there's always negativity from fans and stuff like that. But I think as a collective, we've, we're past that. Yeah. Just shitting, on the, shitting on the team. I think we've just got to get through it. And, you know, we're two games off the top. You win the last three. Like I said, You'd probably make the four because you know I was looking at the fixture Frio, Port, and all these teams play top eight teams at least twice. Mm. Twice, you know, Port's even got Melbourne this week at the G. And that's never a guarantee, you know what I mean? Like, you people go, Oh, they'll get past Melbourne, but well, you know, I feel like Melbourne have that extra leg up at the G sometimes, you know, and they want to end the season well. And they're probably, I know they're not a chance, but they're still mathematically, I guess, <laughs> you know what I mean? I know their draw is tough, but yeah. You know what I mean? I feel like it's just it, no game is easy at the moment, Pato. Mm. Yeah, God, that ladder's tight, isn't it? Yeah. Like, we're eighth two games out of the top la- top of the ladder. Like, that's ridiculous. Yeah. And Melbourne is still somehow still a chance. I mean, yeah, like, I they're still both on the ladder, and I think it's going to be very, very tough yeah. to make it. But, God, mm. there's still that hope. And then, as you said, like, if the Ds can find a way to get the win on the weekend... Yeah. There's belief, yeah. You just mm. you win. That's what I said with us. If we win this week, you go fuck. Come on, and then you you get continuity and you get wins on the board against the Eagles and Saints. Hopefully, not saying it's a lock, but mm. we've had so many opportunities to build momentum, and I think this is the last opportunity to start a good run. Mm. You know exactly right. Very well wrapped up that. But before we wrap up the episode, is there anything else you would like to touch on before? Obviously, we head into the preview next week. I think it's been a good uh, preview. I think we've covered off a lot of topics in terms of selection and uh, how we want to play and um, the improvements we want to see. But 
just get to the J. I think it'll be a packed MCG Sunday Arvo. I'm happy it's Sunday Arvo. Yeah, I just like the Sunday Arvo. It's almost my favourite time slot, I must say. Mm. I just like, of course, we love a you know a Friday night under the lights, but I just like being in the sun. Yeah, and it's a sunny day. It's expected to be 18, so obviously warmer weather's coming around and. Um, should be a cracker. Should be an absolute little bit of a mini final. I think if they lose, they're done because uh, their percentage yeah. isn't overly great. Um, even if they win, unless they beat us by heaps, I don't think they go above us on the ladder. So for them, it's elimination. Of course, for us, it's probably elimination from the top four if we lose this game. And ultimately, a risky final two weeks. Yeah. Heading into Perth. Heading to Perth against the Eagles, who, who fucking knows what Eagles turn up. You know what I mean? Here and there. And then the Saints decide to turn it up here and there, especially when we play against them. Yeah. Gosh, just just get it. Just get it. Yeah. Done, please, this week. Just get it done. <laughs> just move on. Yeah. And as you've always said, it's the we just need that win. And I feel like that will set the season up. Yep. Because yep. if we just can just get this win, we're going to be the Eagles. We're going to be the Saints. We're going to be potentially yeah. in that top four. Mm. We've got that confidence back. Yep. We're back in the race. Yep. It's so close. It is just right. It's oh. fun. Like even in that disappointing month, we haven't got smashed. Yeah. Like you said with the end of the games in the game management, you were spot on. And I was thinking about it when you were saying it. We just haven't nailed the moments when we needed to in the last five weeks. Even the Giants game, we were coming back. Even the dogs game, how many chances did we have in the last quarter? You know what I mean? So there haven't been full four quarters of absolute piles of shit. Yeah. Yeah. It's just the moments and patches where we haven't just nailed it. We mm. haven't nailed it like we were earlier in the year. If we can fix that up this week, that's the confidence you need to be able to nail the moments, whether it's 10 minutes into the second quarter or 30 seconds to go in the last quarter. It's fine moments, set shots, big tackles, big marks, anything, mm. little moments. Yeah, no, exactly right. You know, I like, like that's why I love doing these episodes because like it kind of just gives you a bit of a – reality mm. check in a the reassurance of like we actually are okay yeah it's like i feel like you would you would say some stuff that i'm like yeah yeah yeah, good point and then same thing like, yeah, like exactly stuff that yep. you might have a different opinion of and then might change your opinion as well so mm, it's exactly always right. good just kind of coming on and be like yeah because i kind of was heading into this game and be like oh <laughs> just our season's in like that's yeah. just away at the moment but like now it's like well come on we're not playing that bad and the Pies played pretty well last week with their full list back. Yeah. And we lost by three points. Yeah. Had a goal after the siren and we played eight good minutes of footy. Like, yeah. I don't know, just small things like that. I just think we, we are getting absolutely smacked huh. in, 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 in any games. And most of it, it's our fault. We know what it will. Yeah. We're yep. So that's that's also a great yeah. thing to know. But um, Daffy Boy, obviously... Um, preview episode done, and obviously we will touch on the re- um, we will do a review episode. I, I think I accidentally said preview episode next week, but obviously we'll do a <laughs> review episode for the Hawks game. Um, we'll sort out yep. when we're going to do that. But to every single blue bagger out there, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe on our YouTube. When we do say subscribe, it, it actually is shown that you guys actually do subscribe. So just reminding you that it does definitely help our channel. So make sure to subscribe um, on YouTube and also check out, out our um, podcast platform, Spotify, Apple Music, Google, Google Podcast, Daffy Boy, um, <laughs> Amazon Music as well, I think. So make sure to get around all of those. Yep. And also make sure to get around our social platforms as well, Instagram, TikTok, um, X as well. Um, there's a few others out there. But to you, Daffy Boy, and to every single blue bagger out there. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>